Hello everybody, it's your friend Kevin and this is another Off The Chain. Um, I am excited, somewhat feeling good today. Um, uh, you know, I've been doing my journaling, reflecting and then um, reflecting on the day that happened and then Hopes and Dreams for the day that's coming. Two different books. Uh, I'm still practicing to do the reflecting at night and then the Hopes and Dreams in the morning. It seems like I do them in the morning. Um, and my new way of being, my new way of practicing is to wait, uh, to look at, well, hang on a minute, what, what's distracting me? What am I doing in the evenings? It's making me do this. And it simply is being a veg head and sitting down plopping in front of the TV. And I really think I've got to want to choose to um, <clears throat> stop that. Um, not that I don't mind being entertained. I just find it well, what's the point? It's a really kind of like a time waster. And maybe you can think in your own ways. There's there's time that you want to spend doing things that, you know, you enjoy relaxing, reading books, uh, playing music, um, you know, interacting with other people. And then there's time where you just simply you kind of chomp on time watching mindless rubbish, uh, which is what I did. Um um, you know, I, I, I get I'm as guilty as anyone who gets into these fictitious, well-written uh, television episodial things. And oof, I want to know what happens next. And then I get the realization, well, that was just a fictitious story that somebody wrote and I got pulled into. Um, so if I'm able to turn off the mainstream news, which I've done, uh, I can certainly turn that off. Um Anyway, got a link for you to, or at least I got a um, a little nugget for you as I watch some of my podcasts and some of the other videos I watch to tune in and to get a take on everything, you know, the whole vibrational uh, makeup of the universe. These great people like myself and you and all of us have these nuggets of wisdom that come springing forward. Um, and no word of a lie, uh, this wonderful British astrologer known as Pam Gregory uh, and her friend uh, Braca, I don't know what her last name is, I think it's Smith or something like that. Um, um, I don't think it's that, but her name's Braca. They have this thing on YouTube, this chat on YouTube. And during the chat on YouTube, where they're discussing the planets, and I'm not an astrologer. I know many, but I'm not one, and I don't want to get into what the astrological projection is going to be for this year. But what struck me is the nugget of what Pam Gregory said, which was the abundance that we will experience and it are experiencing is linked to the frequency of our heart what is in our heart what is what we are putting out the vibration we're putting out from our heart is the frequency of abundance is the frequency of more is the frequency that is going to literally i think change the course of where the whole planet the whole human uh, interaction thing is is heading um, I was listening to the tail end of Think Like a Monk. I have it on audio and I have it in print. Yesterday, much of what I was listening to was affirmations, meditations, the daily practice of it, the how to get to it, the understanding of it, uh, the practice of, of sort of starting a meditation practice. Um, and there were some really good nuggets basically a three-part um, dance, if you will, uh, starting with breath. We have five-minute breath work, continuing with chanting. Jay Shetty chants in Sanskrit. Um, you can do something simple like Satanam, 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 and keep that rhythm because it's a good rhythm and for western linguistic uh, left western languages it's an easy one to remember sat truth name nam uh, the truth of who we are the truth of creation the truth of bringing the truth in 
of revealing the truth, being of the truth. Um, and I might be really tangling up that that translation, so I'm sorry. Um, you know, Hinduism and Buddhism, Taoism, is completely new to Western culture. In Western cultures, we are indoctrinated, many of us, in Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism. In the Eastern culture, the Asian culture, you have Hinduism, Buddhism and Taoism. What I love about all of this is we can, it's all linked to what I would consider the buffet of spirituality. In every spiritual tradition, everybody sends their worship upwards, outwards, to a greater being, to a higher being. Most humans on the planet feel this connection to a greater energy source, no matter what that is. It is the human experience to pop it into pigeonholes and labels and slots and what makes sense in our mental mind. To the spiritual world, if it makes sense in our physical world, in the physical experience, then so be it. It should move forward. You know, this is why some folks have these visions of angels and spirits and some folks have the feeling of angels and spirits and some folks have the hearing of angels and spirits. Ancestors, all of these vibrational energies that are not of the physical come to us by using our own experience of the physical world. So example, we can hear, we can see, we can touch, we can feel, we have these senses. In the non-physical, we don't so much have the senses, but because we're familiar with the physical senses and we may be attuned more to hearing something, seeing something, touching something, sensing something. That's all linked to the intuition. When we associate, and I get goosebumps so I know I'm on the right channel, I like to call them spiritual tickles. When we associate the physical um, sensation to a non-physical experience, this is where we are in the presence of spirit. They're coming to talk. How do you know what they're saying, get quiet, tap into that stronger vibration. Meaning, if you have this really acute way of hearing things that other people are not really able to hear, like, for example, I'll give you a perfect example. My left ear is completely gone physically through some childhood trauma that I did myself, several operations. It just doesn't hear right. However, the sensation of hearing, I can hear the messages from spirit world on this left side. So there's not an accident that I listen to what they're saying to me. It starts off as a mumble and then I get quiet and it gets clearer. And then I get to interpret what they're saying. The same with people who see. There are folks who perhaps are blind physically, but yet they're not blind in their mind. So they see. Now, there are other folks who can turn that off and on. The clairvoyant folks, they use it. This is available to every person on the planet. And I'll add, in my, I, my idea, my, my prediction, if you will, is that these feelings, these gifts, these understanding of the non-physical, physical, physical uh, senses are going to keep on getting sharper, 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 sharper. As we move through this year, as we move through next year, um, I was learning that lately I've shared with you, I may need 10, 11 hours of sleep, be wiped out. Then other days I'm wired for sound, awake at two in the morning. This is all the really quick vibrational energy that the entire planet is moving along with. Which is why there are many folks, physical folks, who feel like two years ago. Do you remember saying there's not enough hours in the day? I'm never going to get all this done, right? I, I don't know how I can do any more. I'm doing more than I can do. And this was going on. Then shutdown happened. Woof, here's the pause. 
and everything began to spin and change on its axis, giving us a whole new world to look through. I've shared with you my experience of I didn't know how to produce, put together, even get any of this on going. And it was frustrating, but I kept working at it, kept going at it. You yourself are probably experiencing, learning, doing, seeing, touching, tasting completely different things than you were two years ago. Two short years of our life, there's been lots of changes. Some of them, we just didn't really notice we changed until we noticed there is a change. Others were a little more challenging. Some folks might have been heavily invested in the search for love, the search for that partner, the search for that person, and are now realizing, oh, well, no, I don't really need that because I've got what I need right here. Thank you. I'm good to go. Anyway, I'm just pointing these things out as they came to me. Abundance is linked to, the, linked to the frequency of the heart. And my nugget for that is to say, go with where the love is. Go with where all of that is. I shared with you a few days ago that I wanted to work on judgment, that I found myself being judgmental and I didn't like that. I didn't like the way it felt. I didn't like why I was doing it. It was automatic. It was just Woof, coming out. And initially, I thought, well, the judgment is a thing that's showing me some of my own misgivings. And I went through a period of feeling shameful and then forgiving myself for doing the things that I'm now judging other people for. That was the awareness. What I judge other people for, I'm guilty of myself. The first part of that is forgive yourself because being aware that you've done it is the forgiveness. And then remembering that somebody else's bad behavior, somebody else's um, silliness, somebody else's just wants you out the way on the road, whatever that is, cutting the line, um, cheating, somebody else's misfortune, misgivings, misbehavior is not on you. That's their own pain, their own trauma, their own frustration, their own anger coming out particularly if they don't know you, they've never met you, they have nothing to do with you, they're not associated with you. Those random acts of rudeness have nothing to do with you. It's all about that person. So abundance is linked to the frequency of your heart. Um, I think this is where that goes. So in saying all of that, I was thinking this morning as I'm doing my Hopes and Dreams book, and I'll get to our reading, what exactly do I want to say here? And it felt like today there is an electric feeling of love. I learned yesterday that love is where there is no fear. And indeed, some of my early... Um, chanting or affirmations in the morning uh, love is right here within me wherever love is fear is a stranger and love's here wherever you have love you have no fear wherever you have love you have no anxiety wherever you have love you have no depression wherever you have love you have none of the opposite love is really all there is we are at the core of our being born of love born into love we learn fear and we learn hate. If we were to go to petition the great creator of the universe and say, I want to go into physical form to do these things and have these experiences, do you think they would let us go into physical form and subject ourselves to fear or make ourselves hateful? There are people who have taught us that they're just born that way. They're just born wrong. They're just born bad. They're just born. And maybe they are. I just don't really think I get that, buy that, believe that. Um, I don't. And that's me. It doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be other people. I do believe that hate is learned. I do believe that judgment is learned. And what is learned can be unlearned. Not that it's my job to be the person's teacher unless they come for the lesson and then I'm happy to teach based on my own experiences. So I wrote a poem 
and then we'll get to the reading. Love is where the sunshine is. Joy is what the sunshine gives. Peace is how the earth vibrates. We are how it all takes place. I love that. Love is where the sunshine is. Joy is what the sunshine gives. Peace is how the earth vibrates. We are how it all takes place. So in all of us, we have to look at the sunshine in our hearts, outside of our hearts. Let the earth vibrate with that same peace in our hearts and then let it all take place. Let it all take shape. This is the new way of being. It might seem to many people very hippy dippy doo dah, but it's just how I think I like to roll forward. It does lift me up. It does make me feel better about things and hopefully it will you too. Let's get to the reading. Let's see. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Father in the sky, Mother in the earth, angels, ancestors, ascended masters, hippy dippy la la land. Let's get a message for all of us today. Thank you so much for revealing to us what we need to know about today's energy. Oops, that's just me being a messy shuffler. Incidentally, in the regular oracle cards, there's 44. In the tarot, there's about, well, this one came right out again. The Ace of Autumn. Oh, I love that little card. That's our bonus card. All right, so I'm asking my spirits, do you want that to be the only card of today or do you, should we pull two more? It's then pull two more. Okay, so three piles. Which one do you want? I've got a little nymph on my right, the middle pile. Okay, so I'm going to pull the first three cards straight off the top. That represents where we are, what we're doing. That represents, well, this is what we know, strength. This is what's at the heart of the matter. And this is um, the challenge or the future or what will happen as a result of all these things. All right, so first card that pops out, the eight of winter. Ideas, winter is about like the swords. It's about um, thinking about things, planning things, pondering things. So we're in the planning stage. What's the message? You have what it takes if you only believe in yourself. Thinking that you're powerless when you're not. A lack of self-confidence that keeps you from getting what you want. So if you've got any insecurities out there, if you're worried about things, if you've got some, uh, that's the stuff that, we're, that we've just cleaned up or are cleaning up or know for sure we have to clean up. Where are we working on? A 10 of winter. So another one, mental planning. What does the 10 say? So, you know, an eight is infinity. So I would say this number eight is these might be things that are a constant thing for you. Insecurity, vulnerability, those feelings may be a constant reminder of what's going on. And that might be what you feel like is the theme that you're working with today. The not knowing what's happening next, the not knowing where you've been, the not this, this sort of confusion. Then the 10 the 10 is the completion of it. This is what you're working on bringing to uh, the, an end. This is what you're working on. I want a different way of thinking. I want a different way of looking at things. This is what the heart of the matter is. Perhaps it's what pr could be stopping you. The resolution of difficulties, a, weighted, a weight lifted off your shoulders, the end of an addiction and the end of codependency. So this could be you winning the battle on feeling insecure. For me, it was winning the battle on my health, uh, winning the battle on judgment, winning the battle on putting to bed some of those negative habits that I now understand where they came from, what they're about and how to forgive myself for them. Based on these two, working on a plan, number eight, infinity, realising that things are constantly going on, then understanding that these are the ways you win the battle. And finally, let's turn this over. We have the eight of summer. So summer is cups, emotion, um, love, um, feelings, the ooey gooey stuff. Eight being the number of infinity going on. It never ends. The desire for more meaningful life, realising that it's time to move on, choosing to make major changes in your life. 
my prediction for today's energy on these three cards is that when you put these first two into place, when you realize the habits that you're looking to resolve and you get to the resolution, which is what you're at, where you are right now, the end of it, we're finished with it. We've got a, we've got a, we've got a, 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 a lid on it. Then you get to all this good stuff, the making of the major changes in your life. Let's see how our friend, the Ace of Autumn. Now, this just goes perfectly. So I'm going to put my dandy little cup here so I can lift her up there so you can see this beautiful little nymph. So the Ace of Autumn, Aces being brand new beginnings, the start of something. Autumn representing wands, um, well that's spring, uh, representing abundance, money, um, pentacles, I'm sorry, I meant to say pentacles, um, business, money, finances, abundance, all of those things that make us feel opulent. You know, the other day we talked about the Queen came in, Queen of Autumn. A windfall of money, advice or assistance from others, a very successful project, a happy change in your career. So this completes our daily reading. You're recognizing where your habits are. Your habits are coming to an end based on what you are resolving to do. The result of that becomes love, that feeling of accomplishment, that feeling of I've won the race, I got the medal, I'm good to go. And your little nugget, your little bonus is you've got some successful changes coming. You're on your way. OK, my friends. That's it for today. I love you. Until next time, be well, be healthy and keep learning. Bye.